Welcome to the channel. I am Matt the Lizard, your guide in this adventure and exploration. Today, we're going to check out a bunch of free parking available in Panama City Beach near the beach access points, as suggested by a viewer. All right. Keep both hands inside the video until it comes to a complete stop. You're going to want to watch this one all the way to the end. All right, let's go. Quiet this morning. So, this is what's known as the curve. I think my third video in this series I filmed here. They have free parking here. So that's kind of nice. You can see all the different spots they have. And I've talked to a couple of people involved in these businesses and the land ownership here. I believe the whole parking lot is public and free, but I'm not sure. You know, I would say if you're going to the beach, park over here, you'll be closer to the beach anyway, and let the businesses have their, their uh, front parking. Of course, there's the uh, orange top I filmed over there before. Very sad what happened, tornado came through. Same one that uh, tipped over the house. <laughs> That's kind of sideways. Uh, very sad, but hopefully they'll put something up bigger and better right there. Maybe somebody new will come in and, uh, there is a lot of room here for businesses. There's a pizza place, newbies end zone, the sports bar. Heading that way takes you north towards the Navy base and the east end of Panama City Beach. I'm headed towards Panama City, crossing the St. Andrews Bay. And you can see across the way we have some tourist places. Through the trees there, there's an ice cream place. One of the many Alvin's Island that dot the coast from here to Mississippi. And if you look right down here, you can almost see it down there. It's a short two block walk crossing a busy road. There's beach access too, which I filmed at before. There's Panama City Dive Center over here. Good guys. That's where I got certified for diving. I headed down that way is St. Andrews State Park. We filmed over there before. Okay. And something else I thought was kind of interesting over here. I've seen their signs. I've seen their office. I've never seen where one of their bike racks is. BikePCB.com. Not a sponsor, but definitely could be. <laughs> uh, you just go to the bike. I'm not going to show a QR code. Well, I guess I could. What, what does it hurt? And you'll scan that. You can see the QR code here. And they'll probably text you a code to the lock. They know you got the bike. It's kind of a low-tech version of it, a solution. That's nice. And you can see there's probably, let's see, a dozen, uh, there's probably about 75 parking spots in this lot. It does get quite busy in the summer, but it is a nice option for those who are going near to beach access one, two, and three. Here we are in the shadow of Treasure Island Condo, their parking garage across the street is an auxiliary lot for schooners. That would be just customers only. But here we are, and just like the other lot, it said no overnight parking, but it is public. And I think there used to be a sign here that said no trailers. And of course I filmed over here before. Well, I filmed all the accesses <laughs> except for three. But that little walkway down there to the right will take you to 3A, I think, or it might be a private one, I don't remember. There's like a three, there's two number threes. And that was, I made a video about that. There's the, the fake number three access there, which you can walk to from here, no problem. And then there's the real number three, which is on the other side over there. This is a nice lot, probably, I don't know, 20 spots. 
just want to kind of show you one of the other victims of that tornado we had early this year. And it's uh, kind of sad. Because <laughs> it damaged houses on either side of it. It just came off its pilings, I guess. I'm no engineer. I uh, definitely don't want to fool around in there. It could be quite uh, dangerous and probably illegal. And this is just on the back side of the other parking lot that I showed you. Here we are at number 11, my personal favorite beach access point, only because this is the first place that I went to on the beach in Panama City Beach when I first came to this place. Probably November of 95, I wanna say. Yes, November of 1995, that's a long time. Of course, we've already filmed the uh, secret little military hut over here. <laughs> Uh, you can see what I like about this. Ooh, I hope that guy's got four wheel drive. He looks like he's stuck. Um, there's plenty of parking spots here. And then we're just down the street from Schooners that way. And there's probably about a dozen spots here. You know, there is signage that says, uh, you know, no, no overnight parking, no storage, and beach access parking only. So you're not going to park here and go somewhere else. Uh, but it is nice. You can park right here, walk a short walk right down the access to the beach. Water's calm today. It's a little cooler. I'm wearing a sweatshirt this morning. I'm not going to walk all the way down there. You can see, look at that view. Isn't that awesome? That's the money. And as long as we're here, <laughs> just because I said I was going to do it, the beach flag warning system, double red flag, don't even enter the water. You will be fine. Red flag, high hazard. Knee deep is too deep. Yellow flag, medium hazard. Green means calm conditions, but you'll, you'll never see a green flag. And purple is dangerous marine life. And another one you don't see too often is the leave no trace. They don't want people setting tents up overnight and then leaving them behind. It creates a lot of trash on the beach. So from 7 to 7, you cannot leave anything, any item of personal property within any public beach access. It will be disposed of. And here's our friend, the gold medal Olympic swimmer. He's still, still fighting that rip current. No, he's not. He knows what to do. He's escaping sideways. That's the only way to get out of it. Here we are, Beach Access 12. Since the last time I was here, they've added some parking here, probably required by uh, getting approved, approval to the uh, development order next door because they're building these houses over here. A couple of Airbnb houses. They look pretty tip proof, I would say. Um, but, but there is an overnight parking here. There is some side parallel parking, which is kind of nice. And we're right next to the uh, Regency Towers. No, I'm sorry. We are right next to the Watercrest. Nice place. I know a couple guys who work there. And uh, the last time I was here, when I filmed this, was uh, this was all fenced off. And it was some big sand dunes here and stuff. So you can see they've made quite a big change to it. And uh, they're gonna probably put quite a few buildings in here. Uh, of course there is. A, there is a helpful sign. Basically, uh, Matt, keep out. <laughs> Designated construction site. No trespassing. If you go in here, you're committing a felony. I am on a public sidewalk. Um, towing is enforced, so you don't think you're gonna park down here. You're welcome to park over here though. That's no problem. And there still is a portion of the fence left behind. And I think when I was here, it was fenced all the way down. And you can kind of see. So it's another nice spot. It's probably even nicer than 11, which is my favorite. This one's kind of designed at a little bit of a jaunty angle. Wooden walkway goes up. 
right out to the beach. Get there, huh? Sand fence in place. Help stop the erosion. Nice. This is going to be... I don't know the name of it. But you can see all the information there. Not a sponsor, but those agents could be. Corker and Reverie for sale. Luxury property specialist. Got to put that power word in there. And there is a QR code. <laughs> and I don't want to go any further than this because there was a sign. You can kind of see. Just count each one of those black pipes is probably one lot. Growing a little PVC farm over here too. Be nice. Steps to the beach. I think a long time ago, this used to be Runaway Island. The original Runaway Island restaurant was here. Good food. The new one's pretty good too. Okay, we're here at the corner of Thomas Drive and Sabine. Here's another beach access. Public parking. No overnight parking. What's unusual about this spot is there's actually a house here. So one would think that this is the driveway for the house, but it's not. It's listed as a public parking. Kind of unusual. I didn't even know about this place. I drove past it many times. And uh, somebody told me about it. I think it's considered the, uh, the local spot for going to the beach with, a, with no hassle. There's probably maybe, I don't know, 10 parking spots. There is a bike rack here. What's kind of cool about it is it goes between the buildings here. Sterling Beach to my left, cottage to my right. And there's a little paved walkway that goes down. And I, I remember filming over here and it made me think of summer rental with uh, John Candy. All of the red beaked, seersuckered summer renter. Because you could be eating breakfast and someone could reach in and grab your bacon. Never do that to me. Don't take my bacon. Okay. There's a little walkway down here. Again, cottages all along. And here's the last one was 12. This is actually called 12A. And the walkway goes right up to it. A little bit further walk than a couple of the other places, but I like it over here. It's quiet. Very residential. Well, of course, this whole part of the beach is like that. There's a kitty cat. Hey, kitty, kitty. Psst, 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 psst. Yeah, kitty, kitty. Want to be friends? Oh. <laughs> he wants to stay aloof. Okay, kitty. <laughs> psst, 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 psst. Which is fine. <laughs> this is his turf. And then here we are. Rental cottage is there, wide open beach here. Beach rental chairs, you can see it's not too busy. Got down in the 50s last night here. I think it's about 63 degrees right now. I'm gonna be losing the sweatshirt pretty soon. Oh, nice, nice little secret beach. I think it's interesting how close to the property line they are, not that they're doing anything wrong. But I remember when we had the building boom here, 2006, and uh, some of these properties were so close that people living here were catching hammers and stuff off the balconies. You know, it is what it is. And something else that's interesting, it's either this spot or the last spot. Uh, when I did the original filming over there, my wife had a different car. I took her car. I actually slammed my cell phone in the trunk, but the grill of glass saved it. 
<laughs> I still have that same phone. <laughs> so I was like, wow, I believe in that stuff. Don't ask me how I did it or why I did it. And it's either here or over by Schooners. I had a waterproof housing for my GoPro and I left it. <laughs> I went back a couple times, they're lost and found. It's one of those things, unless you have this GoPro, this model, it's not gonna fit. So it probably got thrown away. Or who knows, maybe it'll show up. I thought I would film this just because I thought it was funny. You can make out what it says on the flag. The bearded real estate agent. Like a normal real estate agent, only better. <laughs> no, there, there's his contact info. If you want some real estate and he appeals to you, give him a call. Not a sponsor, but he could be. We're here at uh, Rick Seltzer Park. This is all free parking, but a very popular place. In the heat of summer, there's probably a 100 parking spots here. You'll have 150 cars trying to park in here. It does have facilities. There's a walkway up there, bathrooms. Uh, I think there's some vending. So it is kind of a nice place if you have little kids or whatever, you can walk down. More of one of the uh, public family beaches. And it doesn't have a numbered access point that I could find. And I just want to check out their signage over here. I saw something when I pulled in. So. Rick Seltzer Park. We're right next to Ansele. And there's some Airbnb cottage style rentals across the street. Looks like another one of those bike bears, bike racks. That's kind of cool. All right. And it says funding for the acquisition of this project site was provided by the Florida Communities Trust. That's good because it is a pretty big piece of property. And I'm always curious when I see something that hasn't been developed, but I'm not saying that everything should be developed. You need to have some preservation here, especially for people who can enjoy it. You know, people who can't afford to live right on the water can come down here, have a beach day. I would say 11 is my favorite beach access point, but probably my favorite beach is gonna be St. Andrews Park. I wanna say it's like four bucks to get a car in there, something like that, and it's really nice. Original Florida, Spanish heritage. It's in the same condition the Spaniards discovered Florida. I just talked to a couple of guys who were going out metal detecting and uh, they were said, we were watching you film. He goes, this is the spot where everybody drops everything. And I said, yeah, it's a family beach. You're gonna find <laughs> keys, money, uh, various toys, things like that. They seem pretty excited. That's cool. That's a, another hobby I'd like to get into. If anyone knows anything about it, or can offer any advice for entry level stuff, let me know down in the comments. I appreciate it. Something else that's kind of interesting. Lifeguard towers, <laughs> rescue tower two and one, and a jet ski for the lifeguards. So you can see that's where their driving access is. Yeah, I got a storm somewhere, I guess. Beach is not too busy now. Here we are at uh, beach access 22. You can see the hours are dawn to dusk and they will come and close the gate and they'll probably tow your car away as well. <laughs> so I would say this is the, I hate to use the word prototype, but this is how they're gonna do any of the ones that they update, any of the beach access points that they update where there is parking. Okay, well you can see they have about a half dozen handicap spots. They've got a half dozen of full access to everybody's spots. And then there is about eight golf cart spots. So excellent use of space here. It's wide open. It's nice, it's all fenced in. It's not roofed or anything, but I would say this probably sets the standard for what the county's gonna do on access points that they're redoing where there is parking. 84, number 84, I'm looking at you. And it is nice, I, I'm no expert in these things, but I would say this is probably fully ADA compliant. 
has the blue rubber matting going down to the beach, which is kind of nice. It's a shower head. It was leaking last time I was here. I fixed it. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't touch it. But I did. And this is really easy to walk on, even for me. You know, the sand can be <laughs> a chore, especially if you're carrying things. But this is really nice. You know, access for all. Not everybody uses the beach the same way. Some people like to look at it. Some people like to fish. Some people like to go swimming. Come down here, fly kites. I agree with all of them. Oh, this is something new I've never seen. The Rotary Club provided and maintained a rescue station. So they've got some a flotation device that doesn't require air, it's foam. It says call 911 before attempting a rescue, but tell them you're at Beach Access 22. Wow, what a great idea. Good job, Rotary Club. You gotta love people's ingenuity. Your flip flop blows out. I've heard of putting a bread tie. This person put a couple of paper clips. Smart. <laughs> It'll get you home anyway. They do note here not to back into the parking spaces. And I found out why that was. I questioned it when I was here before. It's because if you back in and you have any accessories on the back of your vehicle or your bumper is gonna stick out here, it's gonna reduce access for somebody who might be in a mobility scooter or something like that. So it makes sense. Of course, this guy needs a coloring book because he needs to learn how to color inside the lines. Look at that, that's shameful. Here we are right across from beach access 24 just down from 22 23 is right there you could walk here from there i've done it before but there's a public lot here that is miss newbies also known as the mothership <laughs> for various reasons uh thomas drive just on the other side of it there there's a good couple dozen spots here there is also a bike rack this is kind of nice. I don't know the status of, of this lot, like how busy it gets. It probably gets quite busy because you probably have people parking here, visiting, going to the attractions across the street, whatever, you know. But it is a beach access lot owned by the county. And there is a handicap ramp. Making it a little bit easier so you can go all the way down to the beach. That house just to the left of number 24, still under construction. When I was here last, it was... Uh, not as complete as it is now. But it looks like a nice place. You can go to newbies or elsewhere and crawl home. <laughs> Here we are at uh, Beach Access 48. And it goes down to 43. This little like frontage road thing is Oleander. And I want to say, other than where the signs are, which starting there and going forward, this is all free parking. Now I would say in the season, good luck finding a spot here. But you can see almost all the way down, you could fit quite a few cars here. So a lot of people park here, go across to the, there's a salty goat, there's a cycle rental place, there's a pawn shop, there's another restaurant stuff like that um, but you can park here no problem as long as you follow the signs there are a lot of other places kind of like this in Panama City Beach but I don't want to mention them because I don't want to go on record as saying hey it's okay to park here and then something happens to you so you want to read your signs and you know common sense would say be respectful to people's property if you don't think you should park there ask or if there's no one to ask don't park there <laughs> you don't want to get towed away and uh, there is plenty of parking here right now. I'm the only car here. We're coming up on where Front Beach and Middle Beach merge. So that would be the end of Middle Beach Road. One end of it, the west end of it. Okay, we're here at Beach Access 54, 55, going down to 58. This one is free parking. We're right across the street from the Pier Park Shopping Tainment District, I guess you could call it. The uh, newly printed downtown section of Panama City Beach. 
for lack of us having another one. <laughs> it is what it is. Fun place to come. This side is tourist, the other side is local side, as my wife says. If you can parallel park, there's usually some spots here. If you get here early, it's kind of off season. I do notice that like a good 25% of the spots are either disabled parking, city worker, uh, emergency services, things like that, which you have to have that, of course. Um, but then there's a lot of people who come here and park and fish. And you go near the uh, pier. Of course, this one, there's a dog beach, which we filmed at previously. And it's pretty quiet. But you could always park here. And if you're going to Pier Park anyway, you could always park in there a lot. You know, as long as you're a customer, it's not a problem. Don't you know I'm YouTubing? Here we are at the Carousel Laguna Beach. This portion of beach. It doesn't say no parking or no trespassing or private or anything like that. And I see people parked here quite a bit. So I don't know, you can correct me in the comments, but I, to me, this is a public beach. Might not be funded by the county or the state. The signs that say Laguna Beach Property Owners Association. Good morning. No overnight parking. They don't want any trailers or buses or people with boats here, which I get it. Good morning. Beautiful yes. There is a Bay County Department of Health water sign that they monitor the water here. I think is good. And there is a walkway down. <laughs> he was colorful, <laughs> but he had a pleasant word, so I'll take it. The world needs more of that. This one gets kind of busy. But what's unique about here? It's not as busy where it's heavily, densely populated down the street. But I think I said this before when I did my carousel review. That store is awesome. You can go in there and get a bottle of wine, some cheese, and just have like a cool little picnic down here on the beach. Um, it's really nice. <laughs> Look at that view. Totally unobstructed. It's paradise. We're here at Beach Access 80, which of course I filmed at before. Um, there are about three or four spots here. And it doesn't say private or anything like that. It's right next to the Beach Access. It's kind of sandy. Probably meant for golf carts. It still is right. And we're real close to some of the Christian retreat places. And just further down that way is the carousel. Of course, heading this way, we're getting to the west end of the beach. The almost the end of the county. Here we are at number 84. I filmed over here before, but you can see how big it is. And I think this could probably get the same treatment as number 22. It would be nice if there was some parking here, because it is quite a big lot. Huh. Not sure what their plans are. We see some tracks from heavy equipment's been in here. I know they said that they were going to be working on it. And you get a large entrance here, which probably is for beach access as well for EMTs or any of the uh, vehicles that have beach services. And they put up somewhat of a fence. So I don't know if half of it is owned by someone, half of it's owned by the counter. If they own the whole thing, this could be another 22 easily. Look how big it is. Maybe leave a driveway there, put in the new walkway put in the uh, ADA compliant parking, some golf cart parking. Yeah, it'd be just about the same size. Probably about 50 feet wide, if I had to guess. This one could be really nice. Okay, here we are at 96. It looks like there's parking here, but I wouldn't risk it. I would say that would be golf cart. There's a sign that says emergency beach access so that the vehicles can drive down there. I mean, there's, would you call that a parking bumper? I don't know. Oh, it actually says right here, no trespassing. Ramsgate Harbor, private property. Could mean beyond that sign. So I don't know. But uh, that's all the parking I found, the free parking in Panama City Beach. 
If I missed something or got something wrong, put it down in the comments. Fine. 69, 69, 69. And uh, behind me, 96. 98 is around the corner, but 97 is missing. So I'm going to do a future video on that. Of course, right across the street from Bayou Bill's Crab House. Awesome place. They're open seven days a week, 5 p.m. Get here early. They have alligators in a tank, good food. I love the smoked oysters, but everything's pretty good. Not a sponsor, but they could be. And you can see going down that way, you're almost to Back Beach Road or US 98, the end of Front Beach Road. Well, there you have it, and there it is. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, this was super informative. I didn't want to do too much crazy stuff other than focusing on the free parking that was requested. Good request, by the way. And uh, just kind of show you some of the tips and tricks as a guide to Panama City Beach. I'm no ambassador for Panama City Beach, but on some bases, I feel like everyone who lives here is an ambassador at Panama City Beach. I love it here. I live in paradise. It's got problems like anywhere, but the quality of life is very, very good here. And I do love living here. Thanks for watching this far in the video. You can see on my shirt, I've got merch. I'll put a link to that in the description. I also have a cameo page so you can order a personalized video from me for yourself, a gift for somebody, or I'll even do some commercial business videos. Well, remember, you are important. And the world needs more people like you. Matt the Lizard, out.